A lot of people, when they look at a photograph, they think of it as a pretty simple item. I mean, it's, it's a piece of paper with an image coated, coated on top of it. If you really go into the details of photographs, the chemical structure is really what's extremely complicated. But it's really when you get to the early history of photography, when people were really doing a lot of kitchen chemistry. People weren't set up with photographic studios all over the place. And so there was a lot of experimentation, people working out of their back rooms, trying to create these chemicals that they could use to create images. You're talking about over 150 different photographic processes in less than 200 years of photography. And a lot of them can look remarkably similar, identical. If you don't really know what you have, you're just basing it on what somebody previously told you, you really don't know how to exhibit it, how to display it, how to conserve it, how to store it without possibly causing some kind of damage to the image itself. So uh, here I just want to show you a couple of some of the early photographic processes. So this is the daguerreotype, and this was really the first commercial photographic process introduced in 1839. And the way this process worked is that they would coat a copper plate with silver, and then they would expose it to iodine, which would create the silver iodine, which is the light-sensitive form. It gives you the silver halide. And then that image itself would be exposed to sunlight in a camera uh, of some image, and uh, it would be then processed using mercury and developed using mercury. And what you get is this resulting sort of image looks almost like a mirror, but it really creates a silver image on a silver surface using some of the more dangerous chemicals like mercury and iodine. And that's why a lot of early photographers, especially daguerreotypists, didn't lead the longest lives. And then there's something like this, which is an ambrotype, which is what you have is a collodion emulsion, an emulsion of nitrocellulose that's holding the silver, and it's coated onto a glass plate. Often these glass plates were backed with a dark surface. Sometimes they would just use a black mat, sometimes it would be colored glass, in this case it's ruby glass. And then they would, in camera, expose this image, but they would underexpose it. So what would happen is the suiting of these gentlemen, the black hair, anything dark in the image would be underexposed and real light looking. So when you ended up backing it with a dark surface, it would come up as being completely darker than what it was originally intended. This is, this is one that's called a tintype, and this is really what you saw people what, what tourists were getting. This is what a guy would set up a little booth on the beach in Italy, and when people come by, he would grab these photos, take these photos of them. It only took a few minutes to get a picture like this. They're really just a coat, uh, an emulsion coated on an iron plate. And again, you have a sort of a, a dark black iron plate, you over underexpose the image, and you end up getting a positive because of that black that's coming through. A lot of people sell fake tintypes on plastic surfaces, and so if you just take a regular household magnet, and see, here's a real tintype. It's on an iron plate, and then this is a forgery. This is our little wall of fame. This is kind of an assortment of some of the more obscure or general processes that we found during our travels and things that help us when we do our work and trying to understand different photographic processes. This one here isn't a photograph at all. It's really a copper printing plate. So it's really an example of a photomechanical process where you took a photographic negative and then broke it up using some kind of pattern to create a printing plate that would then be able to reproduce half tones and things like that. So this is a panotype. So this is also a, a collodion image but this one's printed onto leather. This one's printed on something called milk glass or opal glass. It was popular in the mid 1940s. Especially the early photography had to be portraiture. You can obviously do landscape. And that's really because the exposure time for the images was significant. I mean, anywhere from, you know, up to, you know, 20, 30 minutes for a single exposure. You can imagine trying to get like a four-year-old to sit still for 30 minutes. There's a lot of times you'll see the whole family's pose perfectly and then you'll see just a blurry face of the kid sitting on the lap of somebody. And you can kind of get an idea of what period this was done because you know what the, what the exposure times would have been for, at different periods based on the different processes.